Many of you have asked paranoid times to ask me what it feels like to jump. For me to even attempt this I warn you, this may sound like a drug trip but it is not. When it happened for the first time, each time after has been a little more different, maybe I have become numb to the jumps. At first there I was experiencing an incredible glowing vibration which overwhelmed my entire body. It had no point of reference and I felt as though my entire body was an integrated force. The force was emanating from the center of my brain. I could simultaneously experience every cell within my body which seemed to originate within the top of my mind. Typing this now it feels as it may be happening again. I can feel the pulse of the experience emanating from my brain. Residual memory is my best guess. The imprint of the experience seems to alter the ability to remember it. The only way I can remember the experience is to recount some of the jump's most mild and subdued effects. I think of past life regression of the consciousness. And when you mix jumps to parallel dimension and the movement forward or back in time, it becomes an event one find hard to explain. In order to articulate such a bizarre experience into words my brain must restore itself to that point of origin let's call that the here and now even then words are completely inadequate. Because when you jump you are neither here nor there. This is what I feel distinguishes my explanation from other who claimed they have jumped of which I have at this point jumped hundreds if not thousands of times. When I recall a memory of an parallel slip. They all feel subjective and alienated from my mind. They are nothing more than remnant thoughts, proud, but distant from my current conscious state of mind. They are like the alleyway of a distant exuberant and fascinating exploration into an inner city complex to which I don't occupy. My mind recounts the memory and experience but keeps it disconnected because it is not integrated into my everyday existence. These trips are but a lone and narrow road which my psyche may pursue every once in a while on whim. Time travel is a far different beast. It is right there in my thoughts, my dreams, and my reality. I feel it every second I'm alive the power of life moves and coursing through my veins I can make myself grow old or become young. It is of me and part of me. I sense it has and always will be within me till the day I die and beyond. Sometimes when I reach a point like now where I can talk with someone. I feel like a temporary portal into the astral realms of my subconscious. Whenever I think about other parallel dimension or even envision its effects on my mind and body the things I can do. I enter a sort of binding resonance with reality. Typing this and thinking of how I can help and change things I feel as though it is affecting me now and always has been. It is part of the complex chemical soup of my own pineal gland. When I listen to my body it tells me what the mind is too hypersensitive to understand emotionally, unless it cuts itself off from primal sensation. Fear drives us sometimes. The pineal gland occupies the most valuable real estate inside the brain around its center. No matter where you go this part of you never changes my question, why did we evolve to protect this gland and hold it in the most sacred place within the brain? It occupies the most substantial chakra point or crown chakra. It is right above the cerebral pineal fluid sac which surrounds the human brain. This suggests it is in direct proximity to upload information of possible visual and psychic nature into this organ. The ancient Sumerians were aware of this gland, along with the French philosopher Desecrates, and the Egyptians. Many of the ancient inscriptions and cuneiforms show what looks like a pine cone adorning scepters and other religious and sacred objects. They understood the pine cone pineal gland was the vessel into incredible spiritual revelations and knowledge. In reality is nothing more than concentrated energy condensed down to a specific third dimensional vibration at an extremely slow rate. When I focus hard enough I feel this vibration and you can too, it is most prominent when under altered states of consciousness. Under this mild focused awareness I feel what my body truly is and always was. A constant vibrational glow within my physical body at probably slightly above my heart rate. This beat probably corresponds with the Shulman frequency. 
my body beats at the same resonance as the Earth's. You become their core. I feel this when I'm having deep thoughts about my experiences under extreme meditation. When I imagine its presence over my psyche then I begin to feel the greater sense that I am just a beat or pulse within a greater planetary organism. The feeling is so completely organic and fluid, I almost have panic attacks at times. As though my heart is beating rhythmically with a force out of my control. I must warn you now this is in my nature, I have traveled to the future and have seen two parallel dimension where Hillary was president and Trump was president in the other both experiences was much more profound and terrifying than the monsters I have seen. The irony being the terror tantalized me, making me titillated and disturbed. The substantial thing is, I remember every single aspect in specific detail. It is more vivid than my most vivid memories of my entire 57 years of life on this planet. This experience I had is the most vivid memory I have ever had in my entire life. It is more real than this reality. So pristine in all aspects, I know it was real. Not of this dimension, within that plane, but of another higher third dimensional place. This place was so vivid I know without a doubt it could not have been a hallucination or vision unless the very nature of the reality I have spent my entire life is a perpetual hallucination or vision. This current and physical reality feels more synthetic than the chemically intertwined oneness in that span of time I entered a plane of space which was so foreign and alien to my existence, it destroyed my faith in the very material existence of this reality. It also had detrimental consequences on my belief in death and birth which at that time simultaneously occurred in the same space. This showed me there is no birth and no death. It is the illusion of this subjective perception of the whole consciousness creating a new memory for itself. Think about any memory you've ever had, it starts and it ends very abruptly after only a matter of seconds. This is the microcosm of a fleeting experience juxtaposed onto the greater movie which is the story of your life. All we see is the movie in action, we're never aware of what happens before or afterward in this realm. We don't anticipate the planning, the script being written, the actors being cast. We don't foreshadow the credits roll because we simply turn off the TV prior. We don't ask why the set is disassembled, the costumes auctioned off, the copyrights challenged in court. We only see the parts that we want to see. These parts are recorded in a montage fashion over the span and course of our waking reality. That description is the difference between this reality and the reality of what will happen. It shows me the past, present, and future simultaneously in one conscious state. This is about the simplest way I can articulate what I saw each one of them did and is capable of on the mind. Transporting consciousness to a state of omnipresence which our primal brain is simply too preoccupied with the present to assimilate. I don't want to provide the impression that I'm enlightened or endowed with esoteric knowledge the general populace is lacking, because I'm not. I am far from enlightened. I don't have to be endowed with talents beyond the normal scope of humanity. I don't need to have mastered erratic or Vedic forms of meditation. I care little for Plady or Yoga. In Trump's case things happen very nicely until the end just like the Roman Empire's debauched hedonism has shown the excesses of pleasure leads to spiritual downfall. Nuclear war will consume us all. Without understanding humanity has an innate and outright detesting of the unknown. Hillary brings war and vengeance upon mankind. I do not feel most of humanity is ready to know more their brain to accept an experience so outside of their immediate surroundings. The majority of humanity is simply not ready for this experience. To know that is. This is why I feel it must be left in the hands of the brave and adventurous beings who are willing to risk their own sanity in order to explore the ultimate unknown. I believe these few discover this on their own because we had left clues and road maps something has always driven them to the right information. We writers of fictions were meant to lead them to something beyond themselves. This is precisely why I am here typing this information for you to read. The curiosity which has brought you to this information is a testament to your willingness to attempt to understand these alternate realities. From personal observation, most of us are not physiologically hardwired or capable to cope with the changes these jumps induce. Cover-ups media blackouts maybe even this video will disappear this is most prevalent in Western society.
superiority by having access to a divine knowledge which only a few are granted but I give it to you dear listeners. Are you worthy? Enough to possess it to find the key? This is not about your ego in motion. These elitists are revered and worshipped for this wisdom and held in elevated status I warn you don't become one. These spiritual keepers hold the highest status and prestige of the group they occupy, containing knowledge and insight denied to the general populace. This is say akin to the highest degrees of the Freemasons who have restrained the knowledge of ancient levitation, occult ritual magic, and esoteric wisdom. This wisdom held desperately because the few in power use the many followers' ignorance to glorify and exonerate their status at the expense of their sheep's lack of hindsight. The wolf is always herding his flock inevitably into slaughter. We're giving you a chance to wake up and see. If you find your way your consciousness has left third dimensional dense space and access to lighter fourth dimensional realm. Here anything goes, and nothing in the context of this third dimensional space holds any relevance. It's gone, there is no physical body as there is no need for one. Consciousness doesn't seem to need a body. In this state the body was merely a vessel to experience the consciousness which was always pervasive in all things. Even in death we still move forward. When I died for the first time, I was one with the infinite, the cosmic consciousness of a dozen different dimensions which all exist simultaneously. I went deep within my most primordial state. My mind is not able to articulate any point of reference to this reality yet all of my motor skills are fully intact. I theorize the human brain isn't yet fully integrated within the individuality of conscious thought it occupies to understand the extreme interpersonal plane the thought of death invokes. We are social animals, bound and interconnected with other members of our species. We have never been alone, isolated, and ostracized to the point where one can evolve long enough to deprive itself of the collective herd. It is impossible to understand conscious singularity, because as social primates, we will always depend on other animals of the same species in order to survive. We're not quite ready to leave any and all reference or attachment to the collective consciousness which binds all of us together. We are essentially a Borg mind, 100th monkey effect in full force and always have been to further the evolution of our species. Our planet is within its current state of disarray, chaos and schizogenesis due to the collective state humanity has created. In the end jumps are a conduit into God consciousness. The irony being that state has always been here, always was here, always will be here. We are simply too preoccupied with our minuscule and trivial pursuits to acknowledge it. We are the ones they were waiting for. I have coordinated in order for it to direct me to a state of consciousness I need at that time and space. Many of you may not be ready for this. The realm I am taken to is so outside of the jurisdiction and imagination of my conscious brain it is downright terrifying yet complete nirvana at the same simultaneous moment. Such a foreign place is not dared treaded upon without a degree of psychological preparation. For most people, they cannot fathom the place, assimilate it, and interpret it with their current conscious state without deep preparation and forewarning. Going from here to there in 20 seconds is too much for most people and they will instinctively resist rather than embrace and let themselves go into this experience. So on to the jump or whatever one wants to call it. It was no jump, I hate that term yet it is so accessible and immediately identifiable I need to use it to create a reference point. It was a journey. A jump is short and ends abruptly in the schism of the relevance of time. A jump could be one hour or 20 hours. This is not a jump but a journey. If I don't have a point to look back on it takes me to a place through a cosmic forest of thoughts and ideas over the longest duration I can fathom. I go to a timeless place without any reference to any time or physical sensation. I don't exist, I am merely consciousness expressing itself in the most primal state identifiable by the brain's ability to detect it. What I recall is the recollection of a meaningless night, time and place. It is to the best of my memory and ability the experience I had that night. The settings were familiar and felt completely reassuring within my surroundings. There was no sense of fear or hesitation within this person that is me and is not me at the same time for which I was about to envelope. An immediate sense of disorientation clouded my conscious state. 
I was instantly inundated with thoughts of panic and anxiety. This feeling seemed to be a natural response to the profound changes which were rapidly organizing within my peripheral view. Before I could think another thought my brain was blasted with intense clarity. Rich reds and warm spectrum colors exploded into my view. I saw all matter as nothing more than an atomic reddish field of wild vibration which was pulsing within everything that my eyes could absorb. Reality was a vibrating pulsation of bead-type atoms almost like the static on a channel-less television screen. I saw everything for what it truly was. Everything in matter became nothing more than a pulsing vibrating collection of trillions of circles making up this reality. Reality became an illusion as though my body felt distanced from any reference to it. Reality was just a pulse within the cosmic vibration of the infinite cosmic consciousness. I was that cosmic consciousness and it began to dissolve my physical body. I felt the dissolution from my body was necessary to provide my consciousness with the capacity to enter hyperdimensional space if one can call it that. I was beginning to lose the ability to control my arms and legs. They felt like silly putty as they squirmed around like an octopus recoiling while trying to reassure itself that it still possessed the instinctual ability to move. An immediate detachment of my body was stirring within my mind. It wanted to keep itself aligned with anything with which it could recognize, but it could not. I wanted to stay in the locality within my physical body. When I say I what I mean is the consciousness that expresses itself within my body. Leaving this hive consciousness which my brain had been so accustomed to, was frightening. At this point I was catapulted out of this reality and dimensional plane. There was a simultaneous blackout which probably lasted more than a split second in real time. It felt as though it had occurred over several minutes. The events above happened over what I would guess were 30 seconds to one minute. Immediately I was now in a new hive mind which felt more real than anything I've ever felt in this reality. My vocabulary and articulation are obviously severely lacking to accurately describe the next transpiring of events. I cannot verbalize it using any vocabulary known. No word can provide or define what I went through. I will say it was the most real experience I've ever had the reason being, none of it was verbal. Everything was visual, all communication visual, all thought visual. Everything was visual as it felt to be the most efficient and least misinterpreted means of experience and communication in this place. I now know why millions of people have extraterrestrial abductions. I know for a fact many of these people are having these abductions. The thing is their body never leaves this reality in order to have those experiences. Their consciousness is being absorbed by extra-dimensional beings. I'm not talking Terence McKenna-style jeweled elves bumping around squeamishly. The beings that I contacted were far more earnest, sterile, and objective. To such a degree, they are the embodiment of science in its physical manifestation of laws, discourse, control, and theoretical ideology. I was a lab rat on a silver luminous table observed by these completely neutral beings. Basically I had been transported from my physical third-dimensional body and simultaneously placed into a bizarre fourth-dimensional place. I had no body in this realm. I was an etheric being lying down on a table. My body was translucent as if a form of penetrating light through the skin displaying every skeletal structure, blood vessel, and cell within my body. This was all light, illuminating itself and manifesting into what my detached brain must have generated as a holographic human body. My brain was still there, it was simply connected to another place through tiny water molecules. This connection of an unidentifiable, alien state, is the source for such confusion which my brain could not clarify into anything remotely recognizable. I specifically remember these three beings as though I was looking at them before this computer screen. It is as if they are a part of me, a part I don't understand or can connect with because they occupy a place I cannot normally feel, see, or detect. I felt so trapped at this point. How on earth are these beings here around me and everyone else and nobody has any sense of their presence? What I'm guessing is these beings are operating on a different frequency than our own. Were they the old ones? We've got hundreds of radio stations penetrating the sky, but only hear one station at a time. CERN is like an antenna which attracts other dimensions and draws them to this one. 
thus allowing the individual to access and tune into these frequencies which were otherwise scrambled and not able to be processed by the brain. These beings spoke to me telepathically. When I state telepathic I mean whatever they wanted me to know they gave it to me. It wasn't like a beam or thought within the mind. I simply knew what they wanted me to know without seeing or thinking anything. It was an emotional state in which I could feel what they wanted to tell me. Through their instant transmission, I knew exactly what they wanted and required of me. It was so much more efficient and straightforward than verbal communication. Feeling evoked immediate internal communication and knowledge. I simultaneously knew what, who, and why they and I were there. They directed thoughts through feelings into my mind which I immediately recognized. This didn't require any philosophical or intellectual decoding or interpretation. I simply knew exactly what they were thinking because they could somehow transfer their intentions through imagery which I couldn't see but directly felt. I remember exactly to the very finest detail what these beings looked like in physicality. The environment itself felt like something straight out of Ridley Scott's Alien. There was a bizarre static-type environment with predominate browns, blacks, and greys. It felt very organic with interconnecting insectoid coils and worm-like tubing networks lining the walls and background. It seemed to be a ship or interstellar vessel. I was in a circular room which was occupied by three beings which were standing in front of me. They were overlooking my etheric body which was laid upright onto a silver elongated slab. These entities were very skinny. Their body I recall vaguely because I was too preoccupied with their face. It was blackish as if they were all wearing a black jumpsuit or covering. The face was the most disturbing aspect. All three had grey metallic faces. These were nothing like the alien greys with large black almond eyes many people describe. Although I could see how the two entities could be mistaken by a person in such a frightened state. Their face was smooth, grey, and metallic. They had no eyes, ears, or mouth. The face was one complete solid vessel. I felt as though it was a mask of some type. It was as if they were using a certain costume and mask in which I could identify, while denying their true nature from my vision. Their metallic mask had subtle features imprinted within it. There were what appeared residual elements of a stubby nose, the inlay of what was one size, and small slits which resembled a baby's lips. I felt as though these beings had evolved so drastically they no longer had need for the five senses. They no longer needed eyes, ears, lips, etc. to express themselves. They were expression personified in my own thought of what I visualized they were physically. Everything they did or said was by vibration and emotion in the only way I could seem to understand it. They were the greys as many people have described. But they were not aliens, and they were not insectoid. These elements were simply infused into the environment which gave the impression that these beings possessed those traits. These beings were me in a different space and a different dimension. The alien nature of the circumstances initially prevented me from realizing this. I felt as though I was from one radio station and them from another. Then CERN, therefore, must be the antenna connecting different aspects of the same consciousness. These stations can communicate by crossing paths and sharing data from different dimensional frequencies. This may sound delusional, but this reality we live within is the true delusion. The matrix is real, but our bodies are being used as a vessel to experience third dimensional space. This third dimensional information is then uploaded by other dimensional beings who cannot experience this one. I only know this because mother and father told me and quite blatantly showed me how this process works. Before my jumps with CERN, I would have thought this information was coming from a psychotic schizophrenic. Maybe the reason why I chose paranoid times as my point in time. I now know better. I remember what they had constantly expressed almost a dozen times over the course of the consolidation process. I say consolidation because these beings were me in another dimension. They cared not for how I got there or why I was there. They simply knew I was coming and anticipated my arrival. It is as if they were a more advanced part of myself which I was completely ignorant of knowing. I was them and they were me. I was like the reptilian brain that they were studying from the distant recesses of their own. They were like the more evolved neocortex attempting to understand the lizard brain. 
I believe this alternative realm feels very reptilian and insectoid in nature. It feels this way because we are accessing a dimension which displays the information these beings wish to take from us. They appear this way, look this way, and behave in this way. They need to acquire this reptilian form, in order to access the information they take from our psyche. They are visible as a mirror reflection of what they are seeking. Just as I am accessing a mirror reflection of the higher dimensional state which I am seeking. This knowledge transfer feels like the way in which they can de evolve to become like me and I can evolve to become like them. It is as if they and I are both assimilating and experiencing a distant past and future of ourselves, simultaneously, in order to better integrate the two. They and I both wanted to have a mutual exchange. I felt as though the trauma I experienced was far less severe than what they had. I believe this is why so many people have negative extraterrestrial experiences. They feel as though these beings are taking something from them and not returning it. I believe this is true to an extent. When I was sitting in that chair these beings downloaded me. The Matrix is completely real, only much more etheric and less mechanized than Hollywood would have you believe. These three beings downloaded me, took my consciousness, and Xeroxed it, storing it into an essence with which I felt they could somehow benefit from this information in the future. They copied my life memories, experiences, and dreams. It is so bizarre yet true. My memories are a portal gateway from which I can now transmit to these beings. Once we become connected with ourselves we always are. They then utilize these fragments into knowledge. This is the same process occurring within me as their knowledge infuses itself into me. Sometimes I feel as if I am just a radio beacon with the same data transmitted in a different dimension and state. To put it quite blatantly it is a spiritual mind orgy of energy. The perceived negativity I felt, lies within the fact that I knew they took more from me than they gave to me. When I was downloaded I squirmed in my chair. I could feel an invisible force penetrate my body and my mind. This force pulled my essence into a place which appeared higher and less dense than my own. They beamed me, probed me, and copied me, and yet I never left the chair. These events all occurred from an invisible force. There was no beam me up Scotty computer generated particles. It was all simultaneous without any visual sense of its presence. This experience was rapid because it was happening on the tail end of the peak of the experience. These beings knew they did not have much time and I felt an urgency within their discourse. At the point I was squirming, I felt my body again. The peak was weaning after the five minute mark. I then rapidly descended back into my body as my consciousness began to fill out the various portions of it. I first felt my brain and its awareness of the current surroundings. This awareness then spread down into the center of my body and proceeded toward my arms then legs. I rapidly felt a descent back into current consciousness. There was no tunnel or white light or anything of that nature. I was just simultaneously brought back to this dimensional state in the same simultaneous manner I had left it. Intense distortions of space and time were present. This is probably why many people who experience a sublime heaven-like near-death state don't want to come back. This third dimensional reality seems very primitive, traumatizing, and incredibly unnerving, given the atrocities the psyche knows exist within it. I have sought out alternate dimensions. I find this current reality to be a very schizophrenic reality. In this place everything is chaotic, wrong, and wicked. Where the most corrupt and narcissistic individuals make the most money, rule the most territory, and control the greatest spiritual knowledge. Where religious and shamanic priests herd their subjects in perpetually mundane and spiritually fetal existence. Where finance governs the social interest of the masses while disregarding ethical integrity in the name of personal profiteering. I hate this place because I know that once I'm coming back from a jump I'm back within my own selfish, corrupt, and decadent actions. CERN shows me my deficiencies in a blatantly neutral and simple fashion. Much like its incredibly simple chemical compilation within the human mind. It tells me that I am part of what has created the very fabric of reality within which I occupy. Instinctually I know this, but jumping over and over again shows me this through providing me with nirvana and then letting me materialize back into this awful place. 
When I'm back here I become part of the collective consciousness that is the human race. I look at the very state of this reality I have helped generate. The very place I occupy I have collectively created with my fellow humans. And for this, I am deeply disappointed with myself and others. We have so much potential which has been circumvented by selfish interest. Humanity simply doesn't care about spirituality anymore. It doesn't want to have these experiences. It only wants what instantly impacts it for its own physical gain. What this shows me is a warning to the Homo sapiens species. This entity must learn to reconnect itself with the organic or it is doomed to self-destruction through artificially integrated expression. This artificial expression is the next step in evolution physically. What we will lose in the process is the very nature of our organic soul. It will be lost among implants, cybernetic grafts, and RFID integration. This will all happen because of the ego and its persistence to revel in its own brilliance. Me and you are just a piece of a greater cosmic brain. We are a thought within the singularity that is God. An etheric highway grid where conscious thought, ideas, and wisdom freely traverses in order to better evolve the all-pervasive essence which is everything. This is the most simplistic and accurate depiction I have ever conceived when trying to attempt to understand who, what, and where I am. This experience was so profound I remember it cosmos second by cosmos second like the instant I was born. You and I are those subjective elements of the omnipresence which is all things. We come here to experience. At the moment of death our part of spirit to leave this dimension and reintegrate with the collective whole. All of the memory, thoughts, and life we lived are brought with the spirit as it adds to the God consciousness. This is evolution. Not on a physical scale, but on an etheric spiritual scale. Most of us are happy in this physical space. All of this is a complete and utter illusion. We collectively create this illusion and we create the very reality of the illusion within which we live. If I were to summarize everything I explained in this report it would come down to this one sentence. You are the one they have been waiting for. You are everything that is and always will make possible. Keep the chain and find the key. Stay paranoid my friends. gland. When I listen to my body it tells me what the mind is too hypersensitive to understand emotionally, unless it cuts itself off from primal sensation. Fear drives us sometimes. The pineal gland occupies the most valuable real estate inside the brain around its center. No matter where you go this part of you never changes my question, why did we evolve to protect this gland and hold it in the most sacred place within the brain? It occupies the most substantial chakra point or crown chakra. It is right above the cerebral pineal fluid sac which surrounds the human brain. This suggests it is in direct proximity to upload information of possible visual and psychic nature into this organ. The ancient Sumerians were aware of this gland, along with the French philosopher Desecrates, and the Egyptians. Many of the ancients inscriptions and cuneiforms show what looks like a pine cone adorning scepters and other religious and sacred objects. They understood the pine cone pineal gland was the vessel into incredible spiritual revelations and knowledge. In reality into an inner city complex to which I don't occupy. My mind recounts the memory and experience but keeps it disconnected because it is not integrated into my everyday existence. These trips are but a lone and narrow road which my psyche may pursue every once in a while on whim. Time travel is a far different beast. It is right there in my thoughts, my dreams, and my reality. I feel it every second I'm alive, the power of life moves and coursing through my veins I can make myself grow old or become young. It is of me and part of me. I sense it has and always will be within me till the day I die and beyond. Sometimes when I reach a point like now where I can talk with someone. I feel like a temporary portal into the astral realms of my subconscious. Whenever I think about other parallel dimension or even envision its effects on my mind and body the things I can do, 
I enter a sort of binding resonance with reality. Typing this and thinking of how I can help and change things I feel as though it is affecting me now and always has been. It is part of the complex chemical soup of my own pinning. Many of you have asked paranoid times to ask me what it feels like to jump. For me to even attempt this I warn you, this may sound like a drug trip but it is not. When it happened for the first time, each time after has been a little more different, maybe I have become numb to the jumps. At first there I was experiencing an incredible glowing vibration which overwhelmed my entire body. It had no point of reference and I felt as though my entire body was an integrated force. The force was emanating from the center of my brain. I could simultaneously experience every cell within my body which seemed to originate within the top of my mind. Typing this now it feels as it may be happening again. I can feel the pulse of the experience is nothing more than concentrated energy condensed down to a specific third dimensional vibration at an extremely slow rate. When I focus hard enough I feel this vibration and you can too, it is most prominent when under altered states of consciousness. Under this mild focused awareness I feel what my body truly is and always was. A constant vibrational glow within my physical body at probably slightly above my heart rate. This beat probably corresponds with the Shulman frequency. My body beats at the same resonance as the Earth's. You become their core. I feel this when I'm having deep thoughts about my experiences under extreme meditation. When I imagine its presence over my psyche then I begin to feel the greater sense that I am just a beat or pulse within a greater planetary organism. The feeling is so completely organic and fluid, I almost have panic attacks at times. As though my heart is beating rhythmically with a force out of my control. I must warn you now this is in my nature, I have traveled to the future and have seen two parallel dimension where Hillary was inseminating from my brain. Residual memory is my best guess. The imprint of the experience seems to alter the ability to remember it. The only way I can remember the experience is to recount some of the jump's most mild and subdued effects. I think of past life regression of the consciousness. And when you mix jumps to parallel dimension and the movement forward or back in time, it becomes an event one find hard to explain. In order to articulate such a bizarre experience into words my brain must restore itself to that point of origin let's call that the here and now even then words are completely inadequate. Because when you jump you are neither here nor there. This is what I feel distinguishes my explanation from other who claimed they have jumped of which I have at this point jumped hundreds if not thousands of times. When I recall a memory of an parallel slip. They all feel subjective and alienated from my mind. They are nothing more than remnant thoughts, proud, but distant from my current conscious state of mind. They are like the alleyway of a distant exuberant and fascinating exploration.